the first type of nomenclature we're going to talk about is simple binary ionic compounds. Binary just meaning it's made of two ions. Remember, an ionic compound contains a metal and a nonmetal. Electrons are exchanged here. The metal gives up the electron, loses a negative charge to become positive, and the nonmetal takes that electron, gains a negative charge to become negative. This causes opposite charges on ions, so they are attracted to one another and come together to form a compound because of this opposite charge. When we take a look at the main group elements of our periodic table, we see that we can assign a charge of positive 1 to group 1. Group 2 gets a positive 2 charge. Group 3 gets a positive 3 charge. Group 4 can be plus or minus 4. Group 5 is negative 3. Group 6 is negative 2. Group 7 is negative 1. And then our noble gases there on the end, group 8, are always 0. First, let's look at naming when we are given a formula. To name an ionic compound, all we have to do is list the ions listed in the, or given in the formula. We do need to remember that cations return, retain their name. Cation is our positive ion. So, for example, sodium Na+, that's a sodium ion. And then anions, the negative ions, change the ending of their name to IDE. So Cl-, minus, which would normally be chlorine, is changed to chloride or chloride ion. So when we have to name something like Al2O3, we see that there are aluminum ions present and oxide ions present. So we just list them. We just call it aluminum oxide. It is important to note that with ionic compounds, the number of each ion has no influence over the name. So we don't call it 2-aluminum 3-oxide or dialuminum trioxide. Because this is ionic, it can only combine in this one ratio. So by saying aluminum oxide, we know that there are 2 aluminums and 3 oxygens. Going the other way, if I give you a name and want you to write the formula, we need to first figure out the formulas of the ions that are present. So magnesium phosphide contains which ions? We've got Mg2 plus and P3 minus. So in order to figure out how these come together to form a neutral compound, uh, we use the crisscross method. So we take each charge, remove the sign, so no positives, no negatives anymore, and then we place it as a subscript on the opposite ion. So that 2 is going to go down to be a subscript on P, and the 3 is going to go down to be a subscript on Mg. So we end up with the formula Mg3P2. So a couple things to remember while you're doing this. The total number of positive charges must balance the total number of negative charges. When we crisscross, that bounces them for us, but we should always check our work. So if we look at Mg3P2, we know we have three magnesium ions. Each one has a positive two charge, so together they offer a total of six positives. And then if we look at the other half of our compound, we have two phosphide ions, each with a negative three charge, to offer a total of six negatives. So if we take the six positives, add them to the six negatives, we get zero to let us know that our compound has an overall neutral charge, or charge of zero. Similarly, if we come across a compound where the ions already have equal but opposite charges, or they cancel each other, no subscripts are used. So if we look at calcium oxide, consists of Ca2+, and O2 minus. Both ions have a charge of 2, but they have opposite charges. One's positive, one's negative. So the formula simply simplifies down to CaO for calcium oxide.